Hello, I'm Professor Lu. Welcome to our video. I'm here with art prof teaching artist Jordan McCracken Foster and Lauren Welch. Today we are doing a Crit Clash video talking about The Starry Night, a famous painting by Vincent van Gogh. If you would like to grow as an artist, but you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. Before we start the Crit Clash, I want to give you guys some basic information about The Starry Night, even though it's so famous. I still think it would be nice to hear a little bit about this painting. Vincent van Gogh was a Dutch painter, so he lived from 1853 to 1890. Starry Night was painted in 1889, and yes, this was one year after the ear cutting <laughs> incident. <laughs> Poor Van Gogh, that's what everybody thinks about when they think about him. I wish they would think more about the brushwork, but anyway, it's not a very big painting. It's only about 29 inches by 36 inches, and it's in the permanent collection at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. You know what I thought was interesting when I was reading about him? I had no idea that he was largely a self-taught painter. And actually a lot of the people in the Art Prof family are self-taught. So I thought, wow, this is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And he is that artist who struggled during his lifetime, never sold anything, and now is selling sunflower paintings at Christie's for millions and millions of dollars which by the way is sort of an anomaly that doesn't happen all the time in the art world, but Van Gogh is famous for that. He did a lot of paintings of the French countryside. He did a lot of portraits. He was somebody who was very expressive with his brushwork, really bright, saturated colors in a lot of his paintings. Now, going back to Starry Night, we actually have a quote from one of his letters that he wrote to Theo, who was his brother. So he says about the starry night, this morning I saw the countryside from my window a long time before sunrise with nothing but the morning star, which looked very big. So that's a direct quote from one of his letters about the starry night. Here's how Crit Clash works. For those of you who have never seen this before, we assign a point of view to each of the contestants today Lauren is going to argue against Starry Night, and Jordan is going to argue for Starry Night. Now, what we say in this debate, it may not actually be what Lauren and Jordan believe in real life, but it might be. We'll see how our acting skills have been progressing. And if you want to know the truth about Lauren and Jordan, join us on Discord after the stream, and we will reveal everything there. Okay, guys, and at the end of the video, you decide who won the Crit Clash. All right, let's get started. Jordan, you're going to open this argument for us. So what's your first statement to argue for Starry Night as a painting? Uh, yeah, so I think, and I think, I don't think it's a mistake that we, that's one of the most famous paintings in the world and that we, hunt over a hundred years later, are still talking about it. Uh, I love the style of it. I think it's incredibly unique. And it fits with uh, Van Gogh's set style. So I find it interesting that he painted this while in an asylum. And the, I can only imagine the mental, you know, uh, duress that he was going through as he was working on this and still creating something that's really fantastic. So uh, for those reasons and more, I think this is really awesome. Lauren, what do you think? What's your opening statement to argue against Starry Night? I think that I agree with Jordan that there is definitely a reason why Van Gogh continues to vibe with the psyche of today. He is an amazing painter and I'm glad that he's getting what is due. However, it's so strange to me that Starry Night would be the exemplary that is the famous painting that lives on after he has passed away. Because it really, if you're thinking about all the wonderful things that make Van Gogh Van Gogh, Starry Night is not the best example of any of them. Like, both content-wise and 
uh, technique wise. Jordan, what is your take for Van Gogh's painting technique? Uh, the technique, uh, uh, I, I think it looks great, honestly. And I, I appreciate what he's doing with the sky in particular and just how he's able to use uh, minimal colors to achieve something that's still a thing to do. Um, and there's even some examples of his other colors and it looks vibrant, but here he's still able to get that same effect. Um, and as far as the content goes, uh, I actually enjoy the simplicity of it. I think oftentimes when we see artwork, less is more. I don't recognize it immediately, but it's still really great. And Lauren, what is your opinion of Van Gogh's brush painting technique? So Van Gogh's really interesting as far as the brush t uh, painting technique goes. He actually falls on the neo-impressionists. It's not the same as the impressionists. It's um, people that use a kind of like analytical color sense. Now I know that Van Gogh was self-taught. But he was really looking a lot at Seurat. And for those of you that don't know who Seurat is, he's the guy that did the pointillist kind of stuff, you know, with all the dots, the dot, 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 dots, and lots of colors. And you stand far away, all the colors blend together. So you can see in um, some of Van Gogh's work this real influence of what Seurat was doing. And so that's kind of what makes um, Starry Night a little bit it disappointing to me is because I feel like it's more at least as far as his, as his brushwork goes there are paintings that are much more uh, lyrical and expressive and more of like Van Gogh's kind of style especially in some of his portraits or flowers um, but this painting of Starry Night really feels more like a riff off of what Seurat was doing and Seurat does that technique better. Jordan, do you think that Van Gogh just didn't measure up to his contemporaries? Uh, not, I, I'm, I think he, because we know he didn't sell any paintings in his lifetime. <laughs> so if you talk, you know, in the late 1800s, probably not. But nowadays when we we have much, um, much higher to go. Uh, and for his work, you know, I still think that, I still think it's more of an inspiration thing. I don't, I, he, I don't think his goal was to mimic uh, Surat exactly. I think there's still a part of him that's like, let me just be me and let me actually enjoy myself while I'm painting. Because like I said before, he was in an asylum. He was, you know, really stuck. He painted all this from his mind and and I think that I think that he was freeing himself at this point, and maybe he didn't want to do this for up for his whole career. So, Jordan, you're really pointing at the fact that this is not a realistic-looking scene, and this really is really fabricated from his mind. Like he's not painting something realistically. There's really a lot of expressionism in this painting. Lauren, how do you respond to that? I think that, yeah, one of the big things that is um, really important about Van Gogh or about him is that expressiveness. But um, Starry Night is really one of many, many like really good paintings, both that he has done, you know, from life, from memory. The cool thing about Van Gogh is he was painting every day. Uh, while he would, this was not the only he did in that asylum, and he was definitely not stuck at his letters between his brother, his brother uh, I, I pronounce it Theo, but it could be Theo. Um, he was just for paint, he was painting all the time. It was something that really kept him going. So it's it's almost better to see Starry Night as one out of like a whole series of work. And so like this lifting it up, the other things in the series just like doesn't really like make sense. Like if you want to talk about like this kind of like lyricism of Marx and inspiration, you can definitely look at wheat field paintings 
Um, he does, he, he would go out into the field and work on those and then come back in his room and uh, paint them later from memory. So you've got like this complex way of looking going on. Uh, he would paint, for instance, uh, the wheat field with the cypresses. I think that is a great foil to Starry Night. I think it is better painted. Um, there is a nation of marks that's very particular to say like the cypress trees versus the sky versus the wheat fields, whereas Starry Night really is using mostly the same kind of mark. Let's see, we've got some great comments in the chat. Slepnir is saying Van Gogh was way ahead of his time, and that is why he resonates today. Yellow Hat Arts say the reason he's famous is because of the interpretation he did on nature and real things. And Slepnir says he absorbed what others were doing and created his own thing. And Lisa H. says glad he was more than a one-trick pony. And Glennon Inks says, Starry Night really captures an emotion and an atmosphere. Wow, that's a lot of ammunition for you, Jordan. A lot of positive statements about <laughs> Vincent Van Gogh. So, Jordan, I'd love to hear you elaborate on what Sletnir says about Van Gogh being really ahead of his time. Do you think that was the case, Jordan? Uh, yeah, you know, a lot, there's this famous almost like every geniuses that are living are never really understood um i i often joke with my friends about kanye west for example like everyone thinks he's you know bananas lately but there's something about him that is very, very intriguing to me and i think in a couple of years we'll look back at what he said and did and go like i think i get it um and so i think van gogh is and it was it's an example of that in his time, I go there, but <laughs> uh, there is something, there's something about him, uh, about the way he paints, about the way he sees life that I think is really uh, very unique to him and something that I think today we are still trying to fully understand. And if we fully understood it, I don't think it's as famous as it is today. Let's see, we've got some great comments about Van Gogh outside of Starry Night. Maria Rev says, a pity people seem to only think of Starry Night when they think of him. His body of work is so incredible and cohesive. Yellow Hat Art says, yes, I think his drawings are so beautiful, more than his paintings. Neil Espinoza yeah. says, I also love his older works, the dark ones, very expressive. By the way, I know I'm not in this crit clash, but I have to tell you guys, if you have not looked closely at Van Gogh's drawings, you better go to the library right away and check out a book because I love his drawings. Like I get to say whatever I want because I'm not in crit clash. His paintings are good, you know, they're fine, but I love his drawings. They're really raw and really primitive and honest. And I just love his drawings. So if you've not seen them, check them out because they're really incredible. All right, well, Lauren, let's talk about the scene because we've got this tree on the left hand side which is very large you have the swirly mm -hmm. things in the sky you have a little town in the bottom right hand corner how do you feel about yeah. the composition of starry night i think the composition is fine um it it's not causing any kind of tension really in this way that's like it's acceptable uh, you've got your foreground, which is the cypress tree, your town, which is your midground, and then hills, which are your far background. Like, it's set up to the, uh, you know, what is it, the composition of thirds or breaking up into thirds, where that cypress tree is really kind of edging towards that third line there, like right down the middle. Um, so, but, like, in that way, it's safe. You know, it's just kind of boring. Um it's not, I'm not saying that it's like a bad painting, but like take for instance the painting of the cafe terrace at night or um, like the, the painting of his room that's really flipping perspective around and doing some weird stuff. Like uh, he is able to make paintings with more interesting compositions that tell that give a kind of point of view. You know, it's really sad because I know that he made this painting while he was at, uh, I, I believe the hospital was called Arles. 
um, or I might not be pronouncing that right, but um, he, like, it seems like he's very removed from the Starry Night, um, and the paintings that he inserts himself a lot more into that, that I feel like give a better picture of Van Gogh. Jordan, what is your take on the composition of Starry Night, the way it's laid out as a painting? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, and I've said this before on several streams in the past, but, but I think composition really comes down to the intent. And there, I'm sure, you know, there are definitely really compositions and other paintings and drawings that he's done um, and that serve them very well. But for this one, um, I feel like the emotion is meant to be calm, you know, soothing, uh, gentle, whatever other words you want to throw in there. And I think this serves a purpose for that. Um, and I think it would be a bit strange if he didn't play it safe in some way, like with this rule of thirds, uh, the tree on the rule of thirds, he has much like the, the giant moon is pushed almost all, all the way to the corner. Um, there's much dead center. So, uh, there's where he's playing it safe, but there's other places where he's, you know, stretching it out, pushing things a little bit more. Uh, and I think that, you know, again, I think it's the intent of what he's trying to do. Let's see. Salty person's reminding me. We're in quarantine, Claire. We can't go to the library. Oh, yeah, that's true. That was really bad advice, wasn't it? <laughs> Oops. You can look up his drawings online, online. Go, though. Go and look at some of the drawings I'm online. Sure that's that what I meant to say. On... Um, this is a good comment. We've got one from Heba, who says, I live in France, and honestly, Starry Night is not the painting we link the most to him. I'd say people would think more about the other ones. And Natalia is saying present art is always criticized. And when we see back past art, we admire it. And let's see, Wilson is saying, I don't get why being ahead of your time is so important. I don't really think one period of art is better than another as a whole ever, past, present, or future. So why the hype for that? That's a good question. And actually what I do want to talk about is Starry Night is not just Starry Night. Okay, it's different. It's in another category. For example, not every painting in art history has been turned into a mug and sold at museums throughout the world. Most paintings don't become throw pillows. Most paintings don't become belts. And yet Starry Night has become all those things. And a bunch of people <laughs> in here who are way more hip than me are saying that there's been a lot of memes actually with Starry Night. Yeah. So, Lauren, what's your comment on that? The fact that it is such a famous painting that it occupies a very unique place in popular culture. I, I think that it is really cool that this phenomenon exists where you can have a painting that, like, I mean, like, I think Starry Night is seen on the same level as, like, the Mona Lisa. But more or less, uh, like, say... Duchamp's Fountain, uh, where they really just go beyond being a piece of artwork and become like part of the uh, cultural lexicon, let's say. But um, there's also this part of me, and this is, you know, another arguing point for me on the huge thing about Starry Night is that it's actually like really harmful for the understanding of the artist as a person, the artist as a whole, like I really associate it with this mythology around Van Gogh, which is like kind of does poor service to him. Like uh, the first few things that we think of when we think of Van Gogh are, oh, he did Starry Night. And oh, he was like, you know, totally crazy and cut off his ear. And there's this kind of like, it, it just goes to serve this purpose of like, this or like the commodification of the artist as like you know an insane like this insane person that makes beautiful things or this insane person that like despite their illness makes beautiful things and I find that like really gross both as like someone who has like had like you know bouts with like mental illness and like has people in their family it's like that. that is is not a great thing and i would urge people who like starry night to to look why i would love people to see work of his that has more of a point 
point of view behind it because then you see more of the person and less of the like oh mad person that made a beautiful painting jordan how do you respond to the merchandising of starry night and and how much it is seen throughout the world for example in the chat Lean Seo is seeing, I've seen so many people on Facebook do so much Starry Night from recreations to even prom dresses. Oh man, that's really upsetting me right now. I don't think Starry Night should be on a prom dress. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Let's see. Lisa H is saying the kitschy stuff is fun. Too bad he couldn't pay those medical bills <laughs> with merchant sales. 10,000 Crow says that's a really good point, Lauren. I never thought about it that way. And Natalia says, unfortunately, painters are the most appreciated when they die. Okay, so Jordan, what about this merchandise? What's your positive spin on how popular Starry Night is? Uh, uh, well, think, first of all, you only put, you only print stuff like, like prom dresses and belts. And you only put stuff on things that is is successful and or something that is memorable and i think even if i think the prom just might even go a little too far but i still think that it's it's it says something about the culture it says something about you think think about like the mona lisa right we know that better paintings that da vinci's done but for whatever reason that's close to society um and i think that's the case with starry night and regardless of you know someone's individual opinion there's something that struck a chord uh with you know the 20th and 21st century where we say i think that whether you know whether it's on or whatever at least it's still appreciating artwork like i'll be honest if i if, if this were done legally and i was clear on it and someone bought like a mug with my drawing on it i'll be excited about it you know like this <laughs> is you know, one of those times, that thing, um, yeah. <laughs> so actually, Jordan, you don't really see it as an insult to have it on a belt. Lauren, what do you think about that? Well, except that... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Lauren, go ahead. We'll come back to you, Jordan. Except that he sought none of this money when he was alive. He really suffered. He relied on his brother, his character to even send him paints because he, um, you know, he couldn't really hold a job that well. And so it's really, I mean, like, it's, it's cool that it's, like, really famous and all that, but he is seeing none of this kind of production. And is it, I don't know, is it really appreciation of an image? Like, when we look at art, are we really looking at it? Are we really studying it when it's on that mug? Like, what is it there for? That's like my question. I feel like I've got plenty of things that I have prints of stuff on just because I like it, but not necessarily because I appreciate it, if that makes sense. I mean, for instance, um, I have a, a, a blanket at my, at my house that has the Mona Lisa on it which is like an absurd, but I have it because it's novelty. And I think like the story has turned into something that is kitsch, that is novelty, which is also a disservice to Van Gogh. <laughs> Let's see, we've got some great comments in the chat. Um, Yellow Hat Arts says, marketing capitalism has a lot to do with Van Gogh's popularity. Ripple of Aqua is saying, making commercial gain over peace, which showcases circumstantial tragedy is very upsetting. And Lisa really wants to see the prom dress. So I guess we're going to have to find that and post it on Discord after this. And let's see. I'd rather see people. I, I prefer seeing people in Starry Night belt than a plain one, says Natalia. <laughs> and Lian Seo says, I'm going to have to say that it's probably the new Mona Lisa of the millennials because I usually see teens redoing his artworks. It's like Van Gogh is gatekeeping for art students because I can say. Let's see, Delia Pita is saying also popular like the water lilies of Monet, for example. And Maria Rev says, I think it depends on the audience. I personally love Van Gogh, did a presentation on him for a public speaking course, learned even more about him and fell more in love with him as an artist. 
wow, a lot of compelling arguments. You guys are getting ammunition from both sides. This is great. <laughs> All right, guys, it is time. We're going to do a tally. Who won this crit clash? Was it Jordan arguing for Starry Night? Was it Lauren who argued against Starry Night? And this is a new matchup, guys. Lauren and Jordan have never gone head to head like this before. So I am very interested to see who can really take it and, and who's going to walk away crying like a little baby after this crit clash. <laughs> For once, it's not going to be me. I, I can't fight with Jordan. It's too hard. It's too sweet. <laughs> I know. You sort of can't be mean to Jordan, no matter what. Right, Jordan? What is it? It's, it's that Frank Ocean smile that we were talking about in Discord. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you guys think he looks like Frank Ocean, by the way? Tell us. Tell us in the chat if you think yeah, Jordan looks like Frank Ocean. Yeah. Personally, I think Jordan is way cuter, but you know, I'm a little oh, biased. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm like on the edge of my seat looking at these comments Frank putting, Ocean. oh, Jordan. Well, okay, so we got Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. Lauren agreed with most of what she said before she said it. Sorry, Jordan. Okay, well, that's, that's, yeah, okay. Oh, this this is, is tight. tight. Okay, Slepnir says Jordan won, but Lauren had some good points. 10,000 Crows. Okay, I love Starry Night, but I think Lauren had really good arguments. I'm going to say Lauren. Ooh, Cheyenne and Lars both say Jordan. 10,000 Crows says Jordan <laughs> does have a nice smile. Jordan sa uh, Glennon Inc. says Jordan. <laughs> when Willoughby says Jordan. Jeez, this is not easy, guys. <laughs> This, no, this is Man, this I'm going to have to like count. Okay, let's see. Lauren has one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. Okay, Lauren has about nine. Let's go back and check you, Jordan. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'm getting uh, some more, Clara. I'm I think it's Lauren, more. guys. I think it is. I, I, I do want to say, guys, if you do really like Starry Night or any Van Gogh paintings, I know we can't go anywhere right now, but the Musée d'Orsay in, uh, was is that in Paris, I think it is, um, has all of the best Van Gogh paintings, or a lot of really good ones, and and I haven't checked it, but they might have one of those, like, online kind of, like, virtual tours where you can see some of them. Um, highly recommend seeing their collection. <laughs> Tammy is saying... Lauren won, but Jordan, quote, get out of my dream and into my car. <laughs> uh -oh. And salty person is saying, I bet today we'll learn that Clara can't count. You don't need to learn that. That is that is a fact. You guys, when you have kids, you, you become stupid. Like you cannot do basic things after you have kids. That's basically how it works. <laughs> and Maria Emma is saying, what's needed is a starry, starry Jordan. Oh, oh, somebody has to mock that up in Discord. That is like really cute. Yeah, see, Lauren, you're you're totally up against something because Yellow Hat Arts is saying Jordan has some serious fans. I, you know what? I can study all I want, but I I will never have any. I will never be able to compete with Jordan's. No, like smile most of us can't. And everything about Jordan. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm putting out like 500% here and he's still going to win. Guys, we have a new thing that we'd like to showcase to you, which is we are now accepting any artwork that people create in reaction to a tutorial or one of our videos. So I'm showing you guys here. This is a piece that Carrie Jenkins sent to me. You can find her on Instagram, Invisible Brushes. And so basically, Carrie has been watching my anatomy streams. Yes, there is a non-white male in this stream. I felt incredibly proud of myself that I was spreading my wings a little bit. I mean, Michael B. Jordan, he's pretty good, but no Michael Fassbender, that's fine. <laughs> he's still got a really good trapezius. So I'm going to forgive that. So anyway, Carrie has been watching the anatomy streams and I guess that she did this from life. So let me read to you guys a little bit what Carrie learned from the stream. She says, I've been enthusiastically following the entire Anatomy for Artists series and practicing as I go. I know there's still more to come, but I'm already noticing huge improvements what I'm able to see and how I approach about drawing figures, mostly myself at the moment, the only person available right now. It's even changing my experience 
of embodiment to understand the human body this way. I made this quick study after a bath to practice what I've been learning. Thank you, Art Prof. This is really cool, you guys, don't you think? I, I think it's so awesome that, like, people are learning real anatomy things from those streams. And this, like, shows some clear, like, skills being acquired here. I love this. Now, okay, we got to ask the anatomy king, though, because <laughs> that's, Jordan is our resident anatomy expert. So, so does Carrie pass your anatomy test? <laughs> Yes, yes, I think so. Um, all the points were, were properly made and everything. Yeah, you passed. You're good. See? Good job, guys. See, it starts with seeing. Once you can see the form, it really, really helps a lot, you guys. So check out our Anatomy for Artists playlist. And if you guys have made something from watching a video, it could be anything, like let's say you watch the scratch board tutorial, and you went out and you did something in reaction to that, go to artprof.org, click on tutorials, and we do have this form now on this page, and you can also tag us. So if you post it on Instagram, tag us at art.prof, and you can use hashtag artprofshare. And the other cool thing about that is you can see what everybody else and the artprof family is making, and I'm hoping that we can feature somebody at every single stream and just see what people are learning because I get so excited when I see these posts. It's just like the most, it's like professor's dream come true. It's just like the greatest thing. So I hope you guys will do this because this is really, really cool. All right, guys, if you wanna know what Jordan and Lauren really think about Starry Night, go on to Discord after the stream and they're gonna reveal what they actually think and by the way, stop by because we have some funny stuff going on. Apparently, there's a new emoji of me as an otter. So if you want to see what that looks like, you better join the Discord because we're not posting that publicly. It's only in the Discord. <laughs> also, check out artprof.org. Lots of fun, free stuff for you guys there. Subscribe to our channel so you can join the Artprof family. And thank you so much, as always, to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you to all of you guys who voted, who gave Lauren and Jordan the ammunition they needed for their crit clash, for all of your comments, even those of you who are getting a little, little sassy about my intelligence level, but that's okay. I can take it. It's fine. Thank you guys so much. Everybody, please stay safe. We will see you next time. Bye.